Hello, my name is Frank Whittingham. I've been a member of BAS for about 15 years. Around about that time I met uh, Steve Butler and Mike Hughes at Shell Island. I was a bait fisherman at the time and that was all I did. But Steve and Mike uh, were lure fishermen and they were already using braided lines and quick release clips to attach their lures. Um, so it was easy for me to just uh, pick up all they'd learnt and catch fish straight away. Um, we carried on fishing using quick release clips of various sorts for several years without any mishaps. And then I started losing the odd fish, not a huge fish but decent fish. And often I would find the clip broken. There weren't dozens of these but there were a few over the years. And that culminated in me losing a huge fish one afternoon in Wales as it happens. I'm not going to tell you where. And I decided that if I could possibly get away from using all sorts of quick release clips, I would do that. And so I started looking at just using line and somehow tying the lure on. This was a problem because once you'd tied the knot, you couldn't get the lure back off. So I started looking at various types of loop. I don't want to get involved in uh, talking about links and why they fail and different types of links because loads of people are going to come back to me and say uh, try this one or try that one but basically most of them <coughs> have got the same problem in that that's a type of link it's a climbing carabiner and so long as that's loaded end to end like that is now it'll withstand a lot of pull three tons I think in fact but occasionally um, in use in a, in a fall situation or something like that the load could be transferred to that and then it's much reduced. The breaking point of that's about 500 kilos as opposed to three tons when loaded correctly. So a link in that situation would break very easily and sometimes when fish are hooked um, the line is allowed to slide down the clip causes problems. I started looking at just loops like this and it's very easy to tie a lead or a lure on with that loop by just popping the lure back through the loop but you can't get that back off once you've tied a knot you need to be able to push the braid in order to get it to come undone and braid won't do that it just folds up on itself so what you need is you need to be able to pull the loop out and I just tied a tag like that onto the centre of the loop and that's what I used to pull it out we'll just uh, demo that now if you like There's your lure. So we feed the loop through the eye of the lure, open up the loop, push the lure through. It's on. To get that off, you just pull the tag and it opens the loop. You can pull that as tight as you want, you can get it stuck onto trees, bushes, kelp, and pull it and pull it. And no matter how hard you pull, you can still just tease that out and off it comes. I'm not trying to dissuade you from using clips but if you've got any doubt about your clips you're using or you want to try something different or you forget your box of clips one day this is a useful trick well worth a try. Easy to tie up you get your braid cut off a small section say four or five inches Retain that, you'll need it. Make a loop of a decent size. You don't want to be trying to force your lure through or making it difficult for yourself. So we're going to have a loop about 10 inches long. Just make this loop very simply. Once through, twice through three times through. Now, it doesn't always fold down neatly and you might have to redo it again, but we'll wet it, draw it in. Okay. That's the spare end, we're just going to cut that off and leave a long tag. 
I never cut knots very short because there's, if there is any little bit of pull, it could pull out. So you've, you've got your you've got your loop. Now you just need to tie the tag onto the end. Your six inch bit of line you cut off earlier. This isn't a load bearing knot, so it doesn't even need to be very good. Trim that one quite short because it's in a low bearing knot. Now, a little trick that uh, Ian Morris learned was it's quite handy to tie another knot in that tag. Not particularly with this stuff, which is XDS, but certainly something like whiplash, which tends to fray. It just stops the end fraying making it easy to thread. Okay, there you go. And that, that loop, you can use it for a lot of hours fishing. What you need to do is to check if there's any wear on the very point, which is where the knot forms, where the lure clips on. As soon as you see any wear there, retight. Just the same as a link, you wouldn't leave the knot and the link knotted on for weeks, you'd change it on a regular basis. Just loop that on again. Through the eye. Open up your loop. Pull the lure through. Pull it tight. You're on. To get it off, the only thing you've got to not do is not thread it back through the wrong way. So, it takes a bit of practice. I wouldn't just try it a couple of times and then go fishing with it. Try it at home, in your armchair, in the comfort uh, while you're watching TV. Just open that up with the tag and you can see which way that lure wants to go back through. Once you open the loop up, you thread the lure back through the right way. Off it comes. Go again, thread it on, open the loop up, thread your lure through. It's easier if you're doing it straight out of the box and then you don't get the hooks. You've only got one chance of getting the hooks stuck in the loop rather than two. I haven't got a title for my knot but Steve Butler helped me out and he said it ought to be called the Whittingham Loop and so I think I'm stuck with that. I hope you'll enjoy using it. It's certainly more secure than most links.